on the World Wide Web you find many circuits of uh, Yule sieves and perhaps other, say, very simple one transistor oscillator circuits. And I want to pay attention to uh, uh, that typical circuit with, made with one transistor and where, in a certain way, the waveform doesn't care. Of course, the waveform, uh, looking to the electronics theory, is always important because uh, it also tells something about the energy content of an, uh, say, AC signal, but anyway. I made for this video this drawing sloppy one transistor oscillators. And the aim of this video is in fact only to show, to tell how you can make a simple oscillator with minimum components that works. That's the most important thing. So we are not looking at a very proper waveform, say a sine wave or whatever, whatever, or whatever waveform. Anyway, pen over somewhat. And this is, this is more or less the most basic circuit and it is very, very uh, universal. I now made it with this coil here. You can see it here. 40 windings primary, 70 windings secondary. You can see with the, the type of wire that was used. It works. I had not expected that. At least I did not know where it uh, exactly got to work. It works around 7 megahertz at the moment. But uh, this is, like I say, more or less universal. That's important. You can make all kinds of coils, uh, get them into oscillation, even coils with not that are not made in this way, but have a primary and a secondary on, say, an other type of core. Uh, that could be a ferrite core. I want to try to show that. So, well, I'm looking for, yes, for instance, such a, such a core, typical ferrite core. Uh, this is only one primary, but when you wind a secondary over it, uh, you can also use this circuit to get this core this core into oscillation anyway. That's important. Uh, there's one, there are a few important things to tell. At first, that the transistor that you use has to have a very high uh, current amplification factor, otherwise the circuit cannot work. Uh, not enough energy will be transported back to the from the output here, the secondary winding to the input. So that's important. When one transistor doesn't have enough amplification, you can use a Darlington. For instance, made of a B, a two BD139 transistors. And I want to draw them. It's uh, ECB. BD139 their current amplification factor is this is the front this is approximately 170 to 100 so when it's a Darlington made of two of them uh, you can multiply the individual amplification factor so also good for a uh, a high success factor of this circuit. And of course uh, a transistor needs a bias and this is more or less the minimum bias that you can give this NPN transistor. It's made with a 47k uh, resistor. It gives the NPN transistor a forward voltage, a positive forward voltage 
when you use an NPN transistor, the positive and the negative have to be reversed. And in that case, the N the PM I meant the PMP transistor. When you use a PMP transistor, positive and negative have to be reversed, and the uh, PMP transistor gets a negative forward voltage on its base. But NPN is more or less common, always working, etc. etc. This is a very important wire. It goes from the output of the transformer to the input. It couples the signal back via a capacitor of 47 nanofarad. It can also be 100 nanofarad for a first experiment. And like I told, uh, it's a sloppy circuit, but it more or less always works. Very important to tell that uh, when it doesn't want to oscillate, you must reverse the A and the B. And what does that mean? I want to show that on the back side. So, this is oh, too dark. What that means? So, the A now goes to the positive in case of a NPN transistor. Here's the negative. And the B goes to the coupling capacitor that goes to the base. That's important. Perhaps that could not be very clear what that exactly means. Reverse the the electrodes of the output coil, the secondary coil. Well, let's look on the scope and I want, when I don't forget it, I want to pay uh, some attention to another way of giving a transistor the proper bias to make the circuit work. Because with no bias the circuit cannot work anyway. Switch on the scope. And switch on my power supply. And the good thing of this circuit is that it works on a very, very low voltage. That has everything to do with the simplicity. Uh, that also explains why these Yule Thief circuits on the World Wide Web and on YouTube can work on one battery of approximately 1.5 volts. Or 1.2 volts. Uh, it say the the critical voltage where this circuit starts to work, and that has everything to do with the properties of a silicon transistor. A silicon transistor needs more than approximately 0.7 volts to make it work. A germanium transistor, however. When you make this with a germanium transistor, it can work on an even somewhat lower voltage, say approximately 0.4 volts. Anyway, problem with uh, germanium transistors is in general that their current amplification is often, not always, uh, too low to make it work. Anyway, here is the circuit again. Sloppy oscillator, here is the waveform, and it works at the moment on, say, 6 megahertz. My camera starts to run out, so I have to be very short. Uh, when we lift up the supply voltage, the waveform gets very unpure. That's what I wanted to show. I have to stay short now, because my camera flickers that... Uh, my time here, the battery is almost depleted. That's what I wanted to show. Waveform gets distorted on higher uh, voltages. Has everything everything to do with the fact that, that the circuit is sloppy. But uh, biasing can also be done in another way. And that's this way. Here you use 
a potentiometer and with that potentiometer you can set the whole circuit to a somewhat more critical bias and sometimes that can help to get a better waveform. And also important to tell you can use here a, re a resistor of say 27 ohms or 100 ohms to limit the maximum current that can flow so that your transistor uh, will not be damaged when the circuit for instance suddenly stops oscillating uh, the current will go up very very substantially in many cases by the way so again for more powerful applications you can use here a transformer an old transformer say a transformer that works uh, that makes 220 volts that goes from 220 volts to 12 volt or 6 volts good idea is to use that with a Darlington etc etc I hope it was a little bit clear uh, anyway interesting always to look at the scope to see all these beautiful waveforms by the way on my YouTube channel, um, uh, Radio Fun 232, there are many, many circuits of radio oscillators that work very, very properly. And then especially uh, to make sine waves for radio applications. For instance, in a superheterodyne radio. Uh, go to the looking glass on my channel trailer type keywords like oscillator, generator, uh, superheterodyne, radio, shortwave, all these keywords can lead, will lead to oscillator circuits, sine wave oscillator circuits that are very good usable for radio applications. Thanks for watching. So this is a first ID circuit with a high success factor.